Good evening, and welcome to the first episode of All or Nada According to Jack. So in this episode, we're going to talk about uh, a momentous occasion that happened maybe three weeks ago. So right around Thanksgiving, it was advertised that Disney Plus would have a documentary called Get Back by the Beatles. Basically what it is, it's uh, 60 hours of footage that they had put together during the Abbey Road and Let It Be sessions. The intent was that not only were they gonna come up with new material for uh, two albums, but they were also planning a live performance. And that live performance at the time was gonna be at uh, Twickenham uh, Studios. Uh, that basically broke down. Uh, yada 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 George walked out uh, instead it, uh, the whole thing culminated in them having a rooftop concert uh, in this in this documentary you got to six, sit through about 60 hours of footage uh, so I have basically a lot of good points about it a few not so good points and a couple uh so basically, you've seen the movie, The Good, Bad, and the Ugly. Uh, there are a couple ugly topics, but not too many. The good definitely outweigh the not so good and the bad. So uh, I hope you don't mind. I do have notes. There was a lot that I had to cover in order to make all my points. So uh, let's talk about the good. So uh, number one good, we're talking about the Beatles here. They, you know, probably the greatest rock and roll band, you know, of all time. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, it's second and third for me would be uh, Led Zeppelin and The Who. But nobody comes close to, you know, the Beatles and, you know, their creativity and, you know, the way they reinvented themselves in the six or seven years that they were together. So that's that. Uh, Basically, another good point, two excellent albums came out of the sessions uh, with a couple of singles. Uh, uh, some conflict at the end of episode one. Fortunately, Cooler Heads prevailed, giving us two great albums in this documentary 40 plus years later. Uh, one point that I uh, missed at the beginning was that uh, basically what you're watching is uh, today's version uh, uh, of a Beatles reality show. You know, of course, there was a lot of banter. Uh, another good was that they decided to move from Twickenham to Apple Studios after meeting with, with George. And as I mentioned, Cooler Heads prevailed. Uh, one funny thing that happened was uh, they were actually jamming to a newspaper article because they uh, they couldn't come up with lyrics at the time for certain songs. That, that was pretty funny. Um, a great thing was just watching the songs develop. develop uh, songs such as Get Back, Mean Mr. Mustard, Oh Darling, I Dig a Pony, uh, Let It Be, to name a few. Uh, one great thing was the arrival of Billy Preston, I, who I happened to uh, think the world of. He, his, uh, they needed, they basically wanted it to bolster up their rhythm section and they needed an extra keyboard player. So they bring in Billy, he, he sounded great, you know, especially on, uh, you know, Get Back playing that, uh, that electric piano lead. So there's that. Uh, what else? Uh, so at the end of episode two, it's revealed, you know, not too many spoilers here, but the end of episode two, it's revealed that they're going to have, they decided to have the, uh, the concert on the roof of the Apple building. Um, another uh, good George helping Ringo compose Octopus's Garden. Uh, Linda uh, McCartney or Linda Eastman at the time, bringing her daughter Heather. Uh, always very nice to have a cute kid running around joining the fray or running around the office. Uh, brings back memories how I brought my kids to the office. Uh, people that I work with still remember when they were young and cute. 
they still are, by the way. Uh, brings back memories of when my dad used to bring me to work and everybody used to fawn over me and, oh, what a handsome boy you have. Anywho, I digress. So uh, watching the Beatles uh, warming up and playing some old time rock and roll standards throughout the, uh, the documentary was very cool. Uh, seeing them play some actual takes of songs that actually made it onto the album, that was very cool. Uh, like Let It Be, for example. Uh, musical discussions about chord selection and Beatles playing various instruments like, uh, hello, even Ringo playing some keyboards on Octopus's Garden. You had, uh, you know, Oh, I guess it was uh, George and, or no, actually John and Paul playing the drums. Uh, you know, Paul's uh, very astute at playing the guitar, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what else can we talk about? The actual concert on the roof, phenomenal. I mean, sad that they only had five songs, uh, played uh, a few of them played over in multiple takes, but. They were great. I, I can't say enough about it. You just got to go watch it. A uh, couple more funny points. Uh, of course, there, you know, there were noise complaints. Not everybody uh, was uh, all positive about the, uh, the concert itself. Uh, I would say 90% of the people interviewed on the street loved it. But then you had a few people that uh, complain that they you know, that it was disturbing their business. And uh, one old lady complained that uh, woke her out of a sound sleep. So, you know, seeing two uh, London police officers go into the Apple building and uh, a receptionist in the Apple building running interference, that, that was pretty funny. Oh, I don't know what's going on. What could possibly be going on? Uh, five flights up. Too funny. Uh, so then uh, another funny thing for me, and uh, we'll talk about this more, the police actually arriving on the roof as they're playing Don't Let Me Down. Uh, more on that in a bit. So let's talk about some of the not so good. Yoko Ono, always around. I mean, come on. Are we serious? She has to sit by John throughout everything they did. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. She reminds me of, of an unwanted uh, relative significant other. You know, we've all had those in our family where you want to see the relative, but the significant other, maybe not so, not as much. That was Yoko. Uh, I know if I'm in a band, that would, that would piss the hell off out of me. Anyhow, many hours of meaningless banter. You know, to get to the good stuff, you, we, you had to sift through maybe, what, 50 hours of, <laughs> of banter? Oh, no, no. Uh, it was eight hours. So, so you're basically... Uh, sifting through maybe seven hours of banter to get to the good stuff. What was I thinking? 60 hours. <sighs> Give me a break, people. I'm new at this. <laughs> Ringo trying to juggle his drumsticks. <laughs> um, me personally trying to coordinate eight hours of viewing of this documentary in my household with my busy schedule. And everybody in my household clamoring for use of the, uh, the main TV in the living room. Uh, the Beatles trying to sing Two of Us Through Clenched Teeth. Two of us getting nowhere and real fast on our way. And as I mentioned before, only playing five songs, I would have loved to have heard at least a few more. Okay, so the ugly. 
Yoko Ono scat singing. What the hell is that all about? I never want to hear that again. And one more thing. And I did mention this, uh, so I was invited to a recent uh, episode, probably about a month or two ago, of uh, C of uh, the Hudson Valley Squares on Sea of Tranquility, and we talked about five songs that we, you know, classic rock songs that we hear over and over that we still love, and five that we never need to hear again. And one of the tops on my list was "Don't Let Me Down." I'm sorry. That song, you know, playing that chorus over and over ad nauseum, like 16 to 20 times. So my son and I actually discussed it. And he uh, he's like, well, you, you like the song I Want You, She's So Heavy. So what's the problem with that? Well, you know, it's a different dynamic. I love the instrumentation of I Want You. And, and I love the driving beat. And it's a little heavy for the Beatles, so I thought it was cool. So, so that's that. So overall, I would give this, uh, I would say, a four and a quarter out of five stars. It was really good, but I could use maybe a little less banter to get to all the good parts. You know, watching that, you know, John and Paul and their creative minds, it, you know, it was... Uh, the video itself was very well restored. It, it looked like it could have been recorded last year. That, that's how good it is. And, you know, at this time of year with us losing John, you know, tragically, you know, seeing him on that video, you know, and his input, and, you know, being one of the leaders of the Beatles was, was a great thing. So that's that. So as an added bonus, I've thrown in something else. Um, being on Sea of Tranquility, we've done a lot of top tens and ranking the albums. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give you a top ten of the top songs from those sessions. I'm talking Abbey Road and Let It Be. So here we go. Number and I'm going to rattle through these pretty quickly. So number ten, Come Together. Number nine. Number nine, number nine, something, uh, George Harrison too. Number eight, which we just talked about, I Want You, She's So Heavy. Great song, great driving beat. Number seven, this song actually was bumped into the top 10. Um, unfortunately, I've got a feeling kind of got bumped out. Um, two of Us was number seven. I just, I, I love the harmonizing of Paul and John in that. Number six, another George Penn tune, For You Blue. I just love that lap steel guitar that John's playing. That, that was really cool. Number five, uh, the Abbey, Abbey Road medley number two. I'm talking Golden Slumbers, Carry That Weight, and The End. Number four. One of my favorite, favorite overall Beatles tunes, One After 909. I said, I move over once, move over twice. Great song. And again, great job by Billy Preston on those keys. Number three, the title track to the whole project, Get Back. Awesome, awesome. Great job. I would have liked it with a, the third verse, but regardless, it was great. And Billy Preston added such a great dimension to that. Number two, the Abbey Road medley, number one. So we're talking, you never give me your money, Sun King, Mean Mr. Mustard, Polythene Pam. She came in through the bathroom window. And that's that. I think Joe Cocker does it a little better than I do. And number one, this is a song that I've known and liked ever since I was number five. And when I was number five and this song first came out, I couldn't fathom that it was the Beatles actually singing it. I was thinking at that time, I didn't know anything about 
rock bands progressing their sound or anything like that. Um, I always known had known them at that time as, yeah, they're the band that sings, I want to hold your hand and she loves you and love me too. Little did I know that Paul McCartney would come up with this really nice ballad called Let It Be on the piano. That's my number one. And a very poignant statement at that. So that wraps up uh, Beatles Let It, uh, Beatles Get Back documentary. If you have the uh, patience and you have the subscription to Disney Plus, definitely check it out. It is well worth it for, I, I would say, any fans of rock and roll music. Um, so anyway, um, in the near future, we, you know, we'll have more um, episodes of this nature, you know, top tens. Uh, like I said, I'll probably, I may talk about pro wrestling, uh, come baseball season. We might talk a little baseball, who knows? Uh, I'm a little too pissed off to talk about football right now, being a New York Giants fan. I'm sure you could all well understand. Uh, and of course, we're going to talk about some Seinfeld, as, as I mentioned in the, in the premiere. Uh, also upcoming, uh, we're going to... Uh, I'm going to be making, I hadn't been on uh, Sea of Tranquility in about a little over a month, but that's going to start to heat up. I'm going to be on one episode next week. Possibly uh, another really good episode is in the, is in the planning stage for uh, between Christmas and New Year's. After that, uh, another episode right around New Year's, so stay tuned. And uh, again, I thank you very much for your support, and uh, I'll be talking to you soon. Have a good night.